Movement and exercise may be the last two things you want to think of when dealing with either back pain or if, say, you have scoliosis or another disability, but movement can be extremely helpful. I am delighted to introduce our next guest to dive in a little deeper into this topic. She is the founder of Spiral Spine Resources and Pilates Studio in Brentwood, Tennessee. We have Erin Myers with us. Erin, first off, thank you so much for your time. You know, Erin enjoyed a career as a professional dancer. She was with the Radio City Rockettes and has trained in Pilates at the Kane School of Core Integration, but her knowledge, her certifications go far beyond that. She also has a personal experience to share. So Erin, thank you so much for this time. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You are very welcome. So first off, tell us a little bit about your business and what you offer there in Brentwood. Yep, yep. I have a Pilates studio. It's called Spiral Spine Pilates, and we're in mm -hmm. Brentwood, um, kind of near the Galleria Mall. Okay. And um, it's a 2,300 square foot studio. I'm actually in the studio right now. I can kind of give you a glimpse of um, very nice the, the huge studio that we have here. And uh, we do tons of privates. And I've got a staff of 12 that helps me hold down our large clientele base that we have here. We work with kids all the way to people in their 80s living with scoliosis and then people who just want to work out and they want to they want to have a fabulous Pilates studio it's a really boutique studio so we have a lot of high -end clients a lot of athletes and a lot of people who are just normal people that want a private experience we do some small group classes as well on equipment and then we have Pilates teacher training and we have workshops specifically for scoliosis as well so much. Well, they kind of share with us then why movement is important. Why, if you're dealing with back pain, for those of us who have back pain, whether lower, middle, upper, or someone with scoliosis, why they need to move and maybe start exercising. Movement is medicine. It just is. Our, our bodies are made to move. Our bodies are made to heal. And a lot of times when we have um, some kind of a pathology, whether it's diagnosed or undiagnosed, we have a lot of fear and we stop moving. And that's one of the worst things that you can possibly do. And that a lot of times people get injured when they, when they have a diagnosis and they move with someone that doesn't know what to do with their, bo with their body, with their backs. And so because they get further um, in pain and they get more injury, they absolutely stop moving. So a lot of times people have to find a lot of courage in order to come through the studio for the first time. And then they get a little, you know, healing balm when they're here and they're like, I didn't know that I could move without pain. I had an 81 year old client who came to the studio for the first time two weeks ago and because she wanted to start working on her back pain. I was like, you're my favorite client. Oh my gosh. I know. I was like, it's never too late. And she had had a lot of fear because she had worked with a lot of other people and they had all left her in pain and she was about to walk out and she turned around and she said, I'm not in pain. And it's, and it's great. That's what, that's what the goal is, is that people can learn to move yeah without pain, no matter what their diagnosis is. I know that must be like music to your ears when someone, especially her age, who has gone through all that, says something like that to you. For those watching this, you have a personal experience and story because you yourself were diagnosed with scoliosis when you were young. Yep, I uh, was diagnosed with scoliosis at age 14 with a 17 degree upper curve. So it was just a minor upper curve mm -hmm. um, diagnosed. And then the doctor said, oh, I'll never need to see you again. So. I went about my life never thinking I needed to do anything about it. Went on to dance with the Radio City Rockettes. Um, got very injured with my knees, dancing with the Rockettes. And that led me into the realm of Pilates. And when I moved to Nashville um, from New York City, I opened up my first Pilates studio. And somehow, I don't even remember, word just started to spread that I had scoliosis. And I danced with the Radio City Rockettes. So, of course, I would be able to work with anyone with scoliosis, which wasn't the case at that time. But I had um, I had a, a child brought to me by her parents who had scoliosis. And she said, oh, will you give it a try when we work with my daughter? And I said, yeah, I'd be happy to. Let's give it a try. And so within the first six months of me working with her, I was able to decrease her curvature to keep her out of a brace and keep her out of surgery. And so that has been the beginning. That was the beginning of my story of working with people with scoliosis. And then fast forward a few more years, I gave birth to my first son gave birth to my second son, sold my first studio, and I wrote my first book on scoliosis. And I was like, you know what? I should really just get an x-ray and show people what my spine looks like. And at this point, um, I had an x-ray and my curve had increased to 35 degrees in my upper curve. 
And I had now developed a lumbar curve in the other direction and it was at 25 degrees. And the doctor had told me it was never gonna increase. That's why he never needed to see me again. So I had to, I had to put into practice all the research that I had read and everything that I was doing on all these other people. So a few years go by and I'm able, I was able to decrease my upper curve to the upper teens and my low curve less than 10. Mm-hmm. And it, it's daily work. Um, but the spine moves. And so I have to take my own medicine that we give all the clients here with movement and it's good. And so, you know, I've been at this for almost two decades now, specializing in scoliosis for maybe a decade and a half. And I've had produced four books and an app and multiple studios. And yeah, so my latest book, I Have Scoliosis, Now What?, is pretty much this just massive tome of research and pictures and exercises on just meeting people where they're at in their journey. Because a lot of people, they start and the the number one thing they say is, I have scoliosis, now what? They just don't know where to go. They don't know right. what to do. They're not getting the guidance that they need. And so that's the journey and, and that's what we're here to meet people. And, and so, you know, with, with you, you know, you have your website, we can follow you on Instagram. When people say they don't know where to go, what would you suggest to them? How do they start researching where to go? Again, obviously, you are a wealth of information and a resource for others. But for those who may not be in this area, what do you suggest to them? Yeah, so my clients or my staff and I, we work virtually with people all over the world on a weekly basis. So, uh, yeah, so we work, we do privates and we do groups virtually with people. And I would suggest start there. My desire is that people with scoliosis, they can find practitioners in their hometown to care for them. That being said, sometimes that's not available. And so um, for those people, virtual virtual work is great. And sometimes we're able to train people in the towns where they live and so they can get one-on-one care virtually. And we have... Um, Actually, this last weekend, we had a big retreat at the studio called the Scoliosis Retreat, where people came in from all over the country to learn how to care for their backs so then they can go home and continue to care for them there. A lot of people deal with lower back pain, so kind of getting away from scoliosis, those who have lower back pain, any back pain at all, what's the first thing they need to do? Yep. So if you look at the back, we have five little vertebra that are holding up the entire upper torso. A lot of people, when they're, oh, my back's not strong or my back this and my back that. If it's undiagnosed low back pain and there isn't necessarily a pathology with it, we need to look to the front of the body and that's the core. That's the abdomen. The abdomen, in essence, kind of takes place of the rib cage, which is higher. And the thoracic spine and the rib cage and the upper mid back, we have kind of this bony circle to kind of help hold it up. In the low back, a lot of back pain takes place because there isn't that bony circle to help hold it up. And the abdominal muscles take place of that bony circle. And if we, you know, are no longer 12 years old and are running around a track and doing volleyball and jumping on a trampoline and playing with our friends and playing gaga ball and all these other things, and we're sitting at a desk for all these hours a day, it's just not getting activated. And so wise movement, wise Pilates movement is a great place to start. Okay. Movement, movement is key. And from all the things that I've seen on your Instagram, because I have now looked at pretty much every video, you talk a lot about mobilization. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to move. So, so a healthy back is there's going to be this um, balance between Mm -hmm. mobility and Mm -hmm. stability. And there has to be this even balance between them. We can be locked up, no mobility, and be in pain. We can, and and be strong even. And then we can have um, uh, a ton of strength, um, or we can we can have too much mobility, like a damper, strength, uh-huh. but uh, or very mobile, but not enough strength. Or we can be locked up and not enough mobility. And the goal is we need to find an even balance between that. We need to find mobility and stability. And kind of the ultimate goal is that would we would be able to control our mobility or control our stability. Mobile, stable, strong, flexible bodies. 
I feel like we could make an entire 30 minute mornings on Main Street and sit and talk with you the entire time and just get all the information that you are able to give us. Thank you, Aaron, so very much. Anything that I haven't asked you that you feel like people who are dealing with this need to hear? When you're in pain, whether it's from scoliosis or from any other back pathology, the number one thing that you need to do is find courage to step out and go and try another practitioner. Because most likely you've tried a lot. You've tried a lot of PTs, you've tried a handful of personal trainers, group classes, and you probably are in pain and probably some of them left you in pain. And you're the only one that can find the courage to take a step to go try something else. So I will leave you on that note. I like that very much because they do not need to be in pain or stay that way. Erin Myers, owner of Spiral Spine Resources and Pilates Studio in Brentwood, Tennessee. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Stick with us here on Mornings on Main Street. We have more coming up right after this.